Hello, and welcome back to another tournament replay analysis from me. I'm your host, Typhoon Carter. And today I'm going to be covering round two for um, Generation 9 Underhues. This is a kickoff tour. I'm matched up against Nico Assembly, as you can tell on the screen here. They were my round two opponent. They basically asked me to play like immediately, like shortly after the round went up. And I did. So going into this matchup, I brought the same team that I used last round, except I made some minor adjustments. I adjusted my Star Raptors' nature to Jolly. And this was because I had a feeling that they were going to reuse this team that they reused in round one. It was mostly because of the Salamence. I wasn't sure if it was Adamant or Jolly, so I decided to change my star after the Jolly to ensure that in case it is Jolly, I would at least have a chance to speed tie it. And it's also relevant in case they use uh, Adamant Cloister, which I did not know if they did or did not at the time. But uh, going into this matchup, looking at their team, they have several frets, Aspafro, who um, at the time I'm recording this video has been quick banned immediately after underused no longer became alpha, so by no longer alpha this means that bans were allowed to occur. I think it occurred like 10 minutes after it became, uh, it went into its beta phase and became a quote unquote official tier. Anyways, yeah, so you know, stored power, combine, we know what this thing does, that's why it got banned. Um, but at the time uh, we played this round, it wasn't. Um, we also have Salamence. Again, it could be Dragon Dance, it could be Special Mence. It has a couple of sets it could run. Although it is worth noting that it notably lost uh, Defog this generation as uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet cut out a lot of transfer moves, which I also mentioned last video, I think. And we also have Slowbro, who is a re regen Pokemon, we know what this thing does, it was a staple in uh, Generation 8 UU. It's doing a lot of the same things it did before, it just doesn't have Scald, which is the only notable, uh, which is a major loss, but still, very solid Pokemon. We have Rotom Heat, which could be uh, either Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, it could also be Heavy Duty Boots, Boots, Cloyster, everybody knows what that thing does, Shell Smash, Ice Cold Spear, Rock Blast, very classic Cloyster. And then we finally have Gudra, who most likely is running Assault Vest. Generally, it's a pretty good special wall that has some offensive presence. Uh, the pure dragon typing sometimes lets it down, but still very solid wall. Um, going into this matchup, turn one, I decide to lead with Sandy Shocks yet again. And I immediately tear at Ice because I want to get some damage on Gudra, although in hindsight, this was probably a god awful Terra on my part. And I get Hydro Pumped here. At this point, I decided to throw out rocks because I realized that I messed up and I needed to at least get rocks on the field. And here, super easy revenge kill for Mimikyu. The play rough lands does what it's supposed to do. Now here, this is where I'm in a bit of a dilemma, where the Cloyster has several options, or at least two main options it could do, right? It could either Icicle Spear, break its disguise, which would be very useful for allowing her Aspafro to sweep my team down the line, or B, they go into Shell Smash, so this was kind of a 50-50 that I had to make. Unfortunately, I get the 50-50 wrong here and they Shell Smash, but it's not the end of the world. It also reveals itself to be White Herb. Herb, which also makes sense given the only other item that Cloyster really runs is Heavy Dewy Boots. Um, for anybody who's got to say King's Rock, that it's been banned for a while. It's normally banned. Let's just get that out of the way. But <laughs> that aside, um, I get Rock Blasted here. Azumarill takes a lot, but it is able to eat it up, and I was able to get some incredibly solid chip damage. On Cloyster, it's down to 14% here, they do the right thing, they Ice Shard. Now here I go back to Mimikyu because I really need a priority user and I do not trust Brute Bonnet to get the job done. And so I Shadow Sneak. I think my opponent makes a major blunder here by just not Ice Sharding. 
I Shard is just such a free play for my opponent because of the fact that one, if you break the disguise, this means that I cannot get a free hit off on a Spafro. I cannot absorb a stored power later on in the game. Um, I think this does come back to bite her later. Yeah, they should just ice shard it here. And here they go into Salamence. Yeah. Now the fact that they went into Salamence when they, which is probably still uh, the best switch in the Mimikyu at this point, makes sense. I mean, they could have also gone to Rotom Key, but uh, Salamence here, I had to be very careful because of the fact that Salamence could potentially be running, it could do a Wing Beat, it could be Dragon Dance, it could also have Terra Steel. Now if it's dual wing B, I don't think the outright kills Mimikyu because the first hit only breaks the disguise, no big problem. Here I go into Star Raptor because I had a feeling that they were going to Dragon Dance. However, I did not expect them to reveal Terra Steel. There's a couple reasons why this surprised me. Because one, for me as a Mimikyu player, I should not really attempt to stay in on a Salamence while I'm minus one. Sure, I would do a lot of damage with Play Rough, but like... If the Salamence has Roost, but it's like, what am I doing? And here, I think they should just reg. They should just done Dragon Dance normally, because I feel like this is a very obvious play from my end that I have to make. Make, and then when when um, you Dragon Dance, now the Star Raptor player has to make it 50 50 and trying to guess between either Brave Bird or Close Combat to, as in, figure out if. The, they have to make a guess, essentially, if the Salamence is going to Terra this turn or not. But um, because of this, this makes it a much easier decision for me. I don't have a 50-50 anymore. And of course, I close combat. I end up winning the speed tie, which works on my favor. Although, to be fair, I probably still have Brute Bonnet as a fallback option. Option, but like... That aside, I think my opponent blew their Terra a little too early, or they showed their hand a little too early, because they could have at least forced a 50-50 on me. Because let's think about this, on turn 9, if I'd be forced to have to guess between, like, say, Brave Bird or Close Combat. Now, if I get that 50, now if I get that 50-50 right, okay, so be it, but you've done everything you can to make your chances better, but if I guess wrong, all of a sudden I am I am basically in huge trouble. My team would have a real shot at actually being destroyed on the spot, but here I end up winning the 50-50 and they send out Rotom Heat. I go into my own Rotom Wash, which is still the play I would make every time. They go into a Spafra. Now, I hard double into Mimikyu here, and they protect. Now, the reason I do this is because I was worried that they were actually going to use protect, and I had looked, I had checked the replays from uh, the previous round, and they had shown protect, so I was like, okay, let's just not waste any time trying to, if it was, if I figured it was substitute, then I would just vote switch, try to break the sub. Go from there, but uh, they reveal protect. Now, if they reveal protect here, which they did, this means that they no longer have the luxury of um, trying to force a get to like substitute up because it can't fit into its move slot. It it always needs store power. It always needs combine mine to do its job effectively, and then it generally needs Terra Blast or Dazzling Glean. So knowing this information. I predicted that they were going to get greedy and start calm mining, so I sword stance to counteract this. And they stored power here, uh, and my disguise goes down, but like, who cares? <laughs> because Mimikyu has basically done its job. They have basically lost their primary win con at this point. Especially considering the fact that they have they brought the Rotom Heat out, it revealed itself to not be a choice or not heavy duty boots, sorry. And they're basically at 7% health. This means they cannot come into a game anymore. They have no hazard removal. And at this point in the game, Slowbro is brought out. I just bring out Brute Bonnet, I use Spore, I spam Seed Bomb. 
and that is just game set match and I am up one nothing in the series. Overall I think uh, I played a pretty solid game but I think my opponent made two major errors on their part. Their first error was not ice sharding on their cloister because that because if they just like ice sharded broken by disguise their swaffer would have a much better shot at sweeping. Their second window of opportunity I think they lost out was using their Terra a little too early on the Salamence and, at, and not at least trying to force a 50-50 to improve their odds of sweeping through my team. And instead, they... I mean, yeah, I still had to get the 50-50 right, but I think my opponent could have played the match a little bit better. I think I did okay for the most part, but let's just move on to game two. Oh, right, and we have game two here. Game 2, I decided to bring a completely different team <laughs> this time around. I was like, let's just bring out a uh, Lycanroc Sandrush team. This was a team that I actually posted in the Team Bazaar in the underused forums. Um, I have two versions. This was the first version of the Sandrush team that I made that centered around uh, Choice Band Lycanroc Day. Now I have Specially Defensive Hippowdon, which is a DPP classic where its special bulk would be just good at, like its bulk would just be good enough to do what it wants to do. The uh, slack off nerf doesn't really affect Hippowdon that much and it still has, it's just a pretty good utility Pokemon for the most part. I also have Serena who's my uh, rapid spinner on this team and Tinkaton is basically the mandatory spot for answer at the time that almost every team needed to have, or like some way to deal with a Spafra. And Slither Wings was mostly for priority. And I also have Substitute Nasty Plot Hydreigon here, which can be very threatening to my opponent's team, besides the Dunsparce if it's running um, Calm Mind Boom Burst. Now my opponent once again has a Spafra. Uh, Gallade is actually a pretty scary threat to my uh, Sandrush team. This is because my Rock at the time did not uh, run Psychic Fangs and instead had Crunch. Um, Hydreigon can also potentially be annoying if it's subplot. And Gengar is pretty manageable, but the main threats I need to look out for here is uh, Gallade, Hydreigon, and uh, obviously Espafra, but I have Tinkaton, so I'm going to have to keep that alive. Um, my main win con going into this matchup was definitely Lycanroc. I just need to make sure the Gallade was out of the way, and then I could basically destroy his entire team. Let's just get right into it. I lead off Tinkaton here, and they lead off the Dunsparce. So I knock off here, and they reveal to be leftovers, and then they glare me. Glare, and then they Stealth Rock. Now I Encore this. So immediately, the first two turns, I figured out that, okay, this is Dunsparce has to be like Headbutt, Stealth Rock, Lair, and Roost, so basically a Paraflinch set. And they bring out Gallade here. Uh, my Tinkaton is basically Para, and I'm forced to go into Slitterwing. Now I go into Slitterwing here, anticipating a Sacred Sword, hoping that I could at least take one hit and then here, I basically have no choice but to first impression, but my opponent does kind of a head scratching move. They Terra Psychic, they're Gallade, Terra Psychic of all things, and their Gallade basically just goes down to first impression. And then they bring out the Dunsparce, and they just get folded by close combat. Now, the only reason I could think of why they might have sent that out was because maybe they thought my Slitherwing was Choice Ban, although that also doesn't make sense because I revealed to be Heavy Duty Boots since it took no hazard damage, so I wasn't really sure what my opponent was doing here. And the game just got out of hand for my opponent very quickly. And then all of a the sudden, they bring up Gengar, right? Understandable move. I get Spadef dropped, which is very unfortunate, so I pivot into my Hepowdon, thinking, okay, this can at least take it, and then I get crit, and I take 72% from a spec shadow ball, and I also get spadef dropped, and at this point, I was getting annoyed, 
by this and I said screw it. I have seven, no, six turns of Sandstorm <laughs> available. I decide to go for game with Lycanroc. And Lycanroc here lands the Stone Edge. Now if I had missed the Stone Edge, no problem because the special defense boost from Sam would allow Lycanroc to take at least one hit. And then they send out a Spothro. I just keep clicking Stone Edge because there's... I have room for air for starters because um, if I miss once and they say decide to calm mind up or whatever, then I would still outspeed them since Sand Rush doubles my speed in the sand. So that Espafra gets completely packed. I just keep clicking Stone Edge because at this point in the game, the damage is already done. Their two main win cons, Espafra and Gengar, they're down. And then the Hydreigon reveals Draco Meteor, so this was most likely a choice back set. And I just stay in anyways, because if I miss, no problem. The Hydreigon's pretty much dead because of Sand Chip. And then they bring up the Blissey, and I'm just like, I might as well stay in, get as much mileage. Don't like, mess around. I don't want to risk a Underwave and have my Slither Wing crippled. And at this point, the damage basically their team got completely folded and I just close combat and that is game set match I win this set to nothing in round two so overall I think my game two was a little bit more clean overall compared to my first game game although <laughs> the stone edge all the stone edges landing might have been a little bit lucky but I even if some of them miss like for example, if it missed on the Espafra, or if it missed on the Hydreigon, I still had actual outs, or like rather actual means to still be able to win the game. In this case, I still had Slitherwing available to try and win the game for me. Overall, I liked how I played this round. Um, I will see you guys next time, where I'll be covering round 3. See ya!